This is the final sermon in our three-part series called Money, Money, Money. This series has been developed upon a sermon written and preached by the founder of Methodism, John Wesley, some 250 years ago. Wesley divided his sermon on the use of money into three parts. Gain all you can, save all you can, give all you can. In week one, we were urged, gain all you can. We discovered that money is neither good nor evil, that in itself it is neutral, and only the use of money may be good or evil. So as those who are seeking to do good in the world, we should not shy away from gaining all the money we can, because very great good can be done with it. Then in week two, we were urged, save all you can. We learned that according to the Bible, the money we gain is not really our money. Like everything else, our planet, our lives, our every breath, the money we possess actually belongs to God. It's merely on temporary loan to us from God. We're stewards of the money we gain. One day we will be called to give an account for how we used it. So having gained all that we can, we should not be wasteful. We should take great care in how we spend on ourselves and upon those who depend upon us. And in this way, we should save all we can in order that we may truly give all we can. So having learnt about the gaining and the saving, Today, we're urged, give all you can. St. Paul clearly states in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, the correct attitude for approaching our giving. He says this, each one should give what they've decided in their heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. It is a curious thing that on the whole, those people who are not so generous and who hold onto their money with a clenched fist rarely appear very cheerful about the money they cling to. And yet, those people who are most generous and seem to hold their money lightly with an open palm appear to be greatly cheered by the money they give away. These generous and cheerful people who hold their money so lightly with an open palm have discovered for themselves the great truth that St Paul sets out in the previous verse. Remember this, he says, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. In this counterintuitive divine economy, the Bible teaches the more you cling to money, the less you gain from it, and the more you give it away, the more you gain from it. And if we're truly to behave not as proprietors of our own money, but rather as good and faithful stewards of what is really God's money, then our giving should be not haphazard and random, not a whim or an afterthought, not even a knee-jerk reaction. Paul says, each one should give what they have decided in their heart to give. If we're serious about giving all we can, then we should be planning it with great care. That planning should include deciding how generous a giver we want to be. The start of Luke 21 records Jesus' assessment of the generosity of those who gave towards the work of God in the temple. Alongside the wealthy people who were seen putting large gifts into the treasury, Jesus draws attention to a poor widow who puts just two tiny coins in. The Greek word Luke uses for these coins is lepta. These were the least valuable coins in circulation in Judea at the time. They were worth about six minutes of an average daily wage. And yet, Jesus says in Luke 21 verses 3 to 4, I tell you the truth, 
This poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. The message is clear. In Jesus' account book, my generosity is not to be measured by the amount I give compared to what you give. Rather, my generosity can only be measured by comparing the amount I give away to the amount that I keep for myself. John Wesley understood this very well, and his approach to gaining, saving and giving money appears to have been sparked by an incident that happened when he was in his late twenties. Having grown up in a large family where money was always tight, Wesley found himself elected as Fellow of Lincoln College in Oxford University, a position that came with a regular income of £30 a year, which back in 1730 was more than enough to enable a single person to live very comfortably. Initially and quite naturally, Wesley began to live according to his increased means. Then one day, when he had just finished paying for some attractive pictures to hang in his room, one of the college chambermaids came to his door. It was a bitterly cold winter's day, and Wesley noticed that she had no warm clothing. She was shivering in just a thin linen gown. Wesley reached into his pocket to give her some money to buy a warm coat, but he found he had too little left. Immediately, the thought struck him that the Lord was not pleased with the way he had spent his money. He asked himself, will thy master say, well done, good and faithful steward? Thou hast adorned thy walls with the money which might have screened this poor woman from the cold. O oh, justice, O oh, mercy, are not these pictures the blood of this poor maid. In 1731, Wesley began to limit his expenses so that he would have more money to give away. That first year, his income was 30 pounds. He managed to live on just 28 pounds. He gave the remaining two pounds to the poor. In year two, his income doubled to 60 pounds he still kept his living expenses at £28, and so was able to give £32 away. For many years after that, Wesley's income continued to grow, and yet he never spent more than £30 on himself. As I mentioned in the first two sermons of this series, through the sales of his published sermons and books, Wesley eventually became one of the highest earners in the 18th century. He was eventually earning £1,400 a year, and yet of that he spent no more than £30 on himself and gave away £1,370. Those are 18th century figures. The equivalent today would be someone with an annual income of a quarter of a million pounds living on just £5,000 and giving the rest away. In other words, at his most generous, John Wesley gave away 98% of his income. I don't know about you, but when I first found out about the truly radical generosity of John Wesley, I felt deeply humbled, totally inspired. I'd always thought of myself to be quite a generous giver, both to the ministry of the church and to various other charities. But now I realise I still have a very long way to go. For me, perhaps the most inspiring aspect of John Wesley's teaching and example is that he truly wanted every single penny that he gained to have the biggest possible impact for good. He believed that before anything else, 
we should prioritise spending money on those things that we need. Our food, our clothes, our home, our transport. He believed it to be equally good and important that we ensure that our dependents, our close family, our household also have everything they need to thrive. Where there remains money left over, then Wesley taught that our next highest priority should be to support what he called the household of God. Wesley felt this so strongly that during the early days of Methodism, he insisted that every Methodist who was able should give a regular financial contribution to the work of their particular Methodist society. In fact, the early Methodist class meetings in which every Methodist belonged were first established in February 1742, not primarily for prayer, not for Bible study, but to enable the weekly collection of one penny from every member who could afford it, to ensure chapel debts could be cleared, to ensure the expense of Christian ministry could be met. More than 279 years later, it remains the case that Methodist churches today are mainly funded by the regular giving of the members. So for example, setting aside special appeals for new projects, the basic operational cost of running this particular Methodist church is over £300,000 a year. Just a small part of that annual expenditure is paid for from money we receive from such things as the hire of rooms or surplus from our coffee shop. More than 80% comes from the money that is given by the members. Our regular giving keeps, maintains and heats our buildings. Our regular giving pays for the employment of two full-time ministers plus one full-time and four part-time lay employees. Only because of our ongoing commitment to regular giving are we now able to step out in faith and advertise to recruit a new full-time youth worker. As we give all we can to the household of God, we enable these good things to happen. And Wesley believed that after we have given to the household of God, what then is left, we should give generously towards meeting the needs of all humankind. I know that many of us do this through our regular support of various charities. As suggested in the past, many of us have set up standing orders directly with the charities that we have championed here at this church, such as Azalea, or All We Can, or The Haven. But I know that many of us also continue to give regularly to various other charities and causes. As a family for very many years, through a charity called Compassion UK, we've been funding the educational and emotional support of a child in Haiti and another child in Kenya, who are each now approaching adulthood and independence. A relatively small monthly gift from us has enabled two of the poorest children on this planet to thrive into adulthood. Many of us also support secular charities such as Amnesty International or Cancer Research. We're part of a collective helping to improve the lives of others. Last week I suggested that we all try out being more intentional in our spending, thinking about the opportunity cost of what we spend. And I found that quite hard. This week, I'm gonna ask us all to be more intentional in what we give, to think about what it means for each of us to be generous in our giving. This is something we can only do for ourselves it's nobody else's business but ours. It's between me and God, between you and God. Maybe it is time to go through your bank statement. 
and to review your expenditure, to think about the charities you give to, to review the amount that you give. And as John Wesley preached, first and foremost in our giving as Christians, we should be seeking to prioritise our giving to the household of God. It's always a good time to think and pray about what God wants us to do with the money he has entrusted to us as stewards. Let us all commit this week to do that thinking and to change what needs to be changed so that we know in our own hearts, not in comparison to others, that we are good and faithful stewards of all that God has given to us, that we are truly gaining, saving, and giving all we can. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for entrusting us with the money we gain. Thank you for the power of money to buy what we need and to enable great good to happen. Thank you for the wisdom of scripture on this subject of money. We're sorry where we have been wasteful or selfish with money. We're sorry where we have not got the balance right between saving and giving. We're sorry where we have left to others the giving and failed to play our part. Please help us to take our stewardship seriously. Please help us to gain a healthy relationship with money. Please help us to save all we can so that we may be more generous givers. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.